Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at the top business stories. Order book for Dubai's sovereign bond issue at over $5.5 billion. Price of gold hits lifetime high. And we find out how entrepreneurs are making the switch to eco-friendly business ideas. There were mixed results across the GCC markets today. The UA bourses ended higher this Wednesday, following a positive trend across Asian markets. The DFM has been testing the 1700 mark. The market gained nearly 1% today to close at 1,702 points. Shares at MR Properties were up 1%. There are reports that the property developer is planning to sell $375 million of convertible notes due in 2015. Arabtech gained 2%. Do climbed 3%, while Aramex jumped over 4.5%. Drake and Skull was up over 1%. 120 million shares were traded, valued at 220 million dirhams. The ADX climbed three quarters of a percent to close at 2,677 points. The real estate sector bounced back today. Aldar Properties and Sural Real Estate both gained one and a quarter percent. Rack Properties was up 2.5%. Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank gained three and a quarter percent. Etisalat continues to climb. The telecom company's shares were up one percent. Fifty-one million shares were traded, valued at 101 million dirhams. There are reports that the order book for Dubai's two-part bond issue stood at over $5.5 billion this morning. Reuters quotes market sources as saying that Dubai has planned to issue a dual tranche $1.25 billion bond with a yield of 6.7% on the $500 million five-year tranche and 7.75% on the $750 million ten-year tranche. Well, to discuss the main priorities for the government of Dubai in terms of bond proceeds, we're joined by du Philippe Dauber Pantanoche, a senior economist for the Middle East and North Africa at Standard Chartered Bank. Hello, Philippe. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you very much. Now, the government of Dubai has said that the proceeds of the bond will be used for general budgetary purposes. What are the likely main areas for the funds? You know, what will they be utilized for? Well, first of all, what is very important is what um, this uh, bond prospectus taught us. And the first thing that we discovered is that um, Dubai government expenditures um, decreased by 14% uh, in 2010, and the planned budget deficit um, is supposed to be decreasing by 54%. So we are certainly in a major uh, fiscal restraint uh, environment. So that's the first lesson that we learned. The second thing that we learned from this bond prospectus is that infrastructure is certainly the main priority of the Dubai government today with one third of the total expenditure. So I think that this is likely to continue and we're going to see um, going forward this refocus on uh, Dubai assets and core assets, um, which is infrastructure. Right, the Dubai government of finance held a series of investor meetings in Europe and Asia over the past few months. So investor confidence is obviously key to the issue. Well, investor interest is more than key. It is an, actually an absolute condition to issue such a bond. Um, the specificity here is that because of Dubai's um, main confidence crisis, especially come from investors, they really had to do um, to run all these meetings abroad to actually test the appetite from potential investors um, in issuing such a bond. So um, this is why they run all this meeting. And once you actually uh, measure that appetite and you actually deem it to be sufficient, you actually go ahead and issue this bond. Now, what we don't know is how much premium, what premium will Dubai have to pay to actually satisfy this bond investor to compensate for the risk. Philippe, thanks for your time as always. Thank you very much for having me.
The Middle East ranks fifth in the world in terms of the regions facing critical talent gaps. A report by Boston Consulting Group and the World Federation of People Management Associations reveals that the region's talent shortage is highest in the fields of infrastructure, business services and manufacturing. The second largest gap is in agriculture, followed by chemicals, metals and pharmaceuticals. Meanwhile, the region's pharmaceutical industry is expected to almost double compared to developed markets, say industry experts. Officials from pharmaceutical giant Merck Serono say that despite a relatively smaller population, the regional pharmaceuticals market is likely to grow between 12 and 14 percent. They were speaking at a conference held in Dubai to announce the relocation of the company's intercontinental office from Switzerland to the UAE. They added the decision to relocate reflects the growing economic importance of the region. Obviously, due to the size of the population, their contribution is still small. But more importantly, what you need to look at is the growth that they are generating. So the mature markets, for example, what we know in terms of uh, growth for the next four years, they're growing at a rate at 6%, while the Middle East is somewhere between 12 to 14%. So its contribution will increase as we go forward. I can't really quantify now in terms of uh, value, uh, but obviously the clinical research is, uh, uh, is very costly. Uh, Merck Serono contributes in terms of or invests in, in R&D about 22% of its revenue, which ranks it very high among uh, the industry uh, colleagues. And the Middle East has been uh, getting its share of clinical trials, uh, as I said, 11 clinical trials uh, currently taking place in the Middle East. There were mixed results across the GCC markets today. Let's check in on those numbers now, starting off with the UAE general indexes. Coming up now, let's take a look at the major international currencies against the dirham, followed by the price of oil and the precious metals, as gold climbs to yet another high, crossing $1,313 an ounce. The metal hit its 10th record in 12 sessions. Silver also soared to 30-year highs. After the break, we find out what kind of solutions are on offer for businesses that wish to go green. 